Hey guys, Pamela here, and today we're going to be talking about four common myths about narcissism. If you read um, a lot of pop psychology websites or self-help stuff or um, if you're just on the internet, you probably see a lot of articles that look like 10 signs he's a narcissist or how to steer clear of narcissistic women. And people I've noticed are on this almost like witch hunt to try and like hunt down who's a narcissist or call people out on it in very black and white terms without necessarily understanding some of the psychology behind it. Misconception number one is people lump narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder together. And these are two separate terms. Narcissism is not a mental illness. It is on a spectrum and everyone lies somewhere on this spectrum. It's based on how manipulative are you? Do you have empathy? Are you capable of seeing something from someone else's point of view? grandiosity or um, do you feel entitled to things so a little bit of narcissism what they call healthy narcissism is a-okay and can be helpful and it can help you believe that you can achieve what you set out to get in the world where it starts to get into unhealthy levels is where you believe you're entitled to these accomplishments or people need to look at you a certain way as opposed to just a healthy sense of your capabilities. And you can still go into unhealthy levels of narcissism before it reaches full-blown narcissistic personality disorder, which is a consistent way of behaving throughout their entire life. So, and it's so pervasive that it turns into an actual disorder. And that's actually pretty rare. It's a very small percentage of the population. Now, why does this happen? Why are we so quick to label other people and how do we end up even considering this. I think that it's that fear part of our brain, that animalistic, quick to judge part of our brain, kind of the same part of us that wants to look at a car crash and can't look away when we're on the interstate. Or it's the same part of our brain that the news plays upon when they do um, dramatic pieces with super negative stuff. They know that that's unfortunately what people want to see. And so when you see an article that says 10 signs you're dating a narcissist, a little bit of you wants to click on it because you want to double check, like, is someone in your life a narcissist? If you don't know better, it can be very easy to fall prey to that. And then all of a sudden we're going yes, no, yes, no. And all of a sudden, just like that, we are sure that we've got to break up with them because we are with a narcissist. This brings us to another myth, which is why checklists don't work well for this. So let's say the checklist says he's not a good listener. Well, I have a friend who gets really nervous on first and second dates and he will talk a lot about himself when he's getting to know someone just so that there's no silences. He's actually very caring, very empathetic. But if you're just looking for signs, that's not really understanding the entire situation. It's almost looking for a shortcut or a quick fix or answer just to be able to put somebody in a box. And that's just not how psychology works or personalities work either. You might hear someone talking a lot, but you don't know why. Like maybe on an interview, they're just trying to impress their future employer. So they're bragging a lot. And really they're not overly confident and don't have self-esteem issues high or low. They're just um, trying to do a good job and say some good stuff about themselves. Another list might say, oh, narcissists are charming, so that if he's charming, watch out. Well, haven't you met some charming people who were also super caring, who always would go out of their way to help, and you found, came to find out that they just were a naturally caring and warm person, and that's what was charismatic about them. That's what was drawing people in, was that warm, charming personality. It wasn't charming to get something from someone. So just saying charming is bad is... Again, that black and white thinking and not even really understanding like the root of the behavior. That's what you have to dig to and that takes time to see. That's why first, second date, that's why first impressions, as much as we should listen to our gut, um, yes, it's extremely important. Also, don't jump to conclusions and be open. How many times have you met someone shy who you thought was closed off and rude and turns out they were just nervous? Myth number three is that these are bad people. And I'm going to read from an article by Eleanor Greenberg. She's a doctor and I have her article linked down below. She defines narcissistic personality disorder as the name for a series of coping strategies that began as an adaption to a childhood family situation that left the person with unstable self-esteem, the inability to regulate their self-esteem without external validation and low empathy. 
Did you guys catch that? It was something that happened in childhood. They're not a bad person. They didn't just come out of the womb stamped with like, will be an asshole and they're doomed forever. It's trauma. A lot of personality disorders like borderline or um, countless others are just from trauma. They're from things that happened that left the person with low self-esteem because they didn't know how to deal with the world. And now they're still looking for that validation from the outside. They're not able to like regulate who they are as a person without seeing this like mirror of them being great from others. Um, so I think it helps to actually picture these people as they were as a child, maybe in a threatening environment and just see where it came from. That does not mean you need to befriend people that are exploiting you or don't have empathy for you. It just helps you see that they're not inherently bad people. And that can help you become a little less frustrated by it if you have to like work with this person or if they're in your family. And then a fourth issue we're going to talk about, which isn't necessarily just a misconception about narcissism, but it's a bias that compounds these other issues. And that's called the confirmation bias. And this is where we seek out and notice information that matches what we already know or believe to be true. So if you have it in your head that you are dating a narcissist or your best friend is one, and then you read all these signs and number seven says they interrupt a lot, and then they interrupt one time, you're going to take that as confirmation, confirmation bias, confirmation that they are a narcissist. You knew it, this proved it to be true. How often do they interrupt? Is it all the time? Do they ever ask you questions about your life? It's, you have to look at the whole picture and that's the theme of this entire article. And one final thing to note about narcissism is that because it is from trauma and it is from the past, it actually can improve. I have seen mixed things on whether narcissistic personality disorder, the whole full-blown disorder can improve. That is difficult because in order to improve, you have to look inside and see what's wrong with yourself or how you need to improve. And if you think that you're perfect as a defense mechanism, very um, unlikely to happen. But if there's someone that falls very far to the kind of wrong side of the narcissistic, uh, on the narcissism spectrum, there is hope if they do get in therapy because because it is from childhood issues and family things with um, psychotherapy, you're really digging out those wounds. And um, if you're interested in this, I highly recommend the drama of the gifted child by Alice Miller. Um, I can link that down below too. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you find videos like this helpful. I vlog about psychology, fitness, self-development. Um, like and leave your comments down below with questions you guys have or thoughts. Um, and share with a friend if you think that this could help them too or if they are unsure about someone in their life possibly having this uh, personality disorder. Okay, catch you guys next time. Bye.